Do you want to become a successful public speaker? Public speaking skills for you. Part 4. Powerful presentation aids for public speaking. It's a series of video lessons on how to become a great public speaker. Public Speaking Skills is a very popular video series from ITV Life Skills for you to improve your speaking skills and public speaking. In this series of video lessons, we're continuously learning various aspects of public speaking and how to become a great speaker. In the first video of Public Speaking Skills for you, we learned how to develop self-confidence for public speaking. In the second video, we learned how to deliver your message in public speaking. In the third video, we learned how to prepare your speech for public speaking. If you haven't seen any of these videos, please do. The links are given in the description box below. Watch all the videos carefully to become an expert public speaker. Also, there's a surprise gift for the one who answers all the questions with a best answer. Stay tuned to ITV and best of luck! So, let's take a look at the learning objectives of today's lesson, shall we? We're going to learn how to use different types of presentation aids. We'll be learning how to use the aids to enhance your speech. We'll also learn how to use presentation aids effectively. And we will learn how to create a speech or presentation using presentation and technological aids. Are you all ready? Understanding the psychology of the audience. Audiences enjoy eye-catching colorful visual aids and interesting ear-catching audio aids. Audiovisual aids enhance a presentation by helping the audience understand and remember your information more easily. All right, it's now time to look at a few guidelines for using presentation aids. Are you ready? Audiovisual aids should have a specific purpose. Don't use audiovisual aids unnecessarily. Audiovisual aids should be used to complement your speech and to add an extra value, not to take away from what you're saying. So, make sure you're using the audiovisual aids only when absolutely necessary. You don't want people to spend their whole time focusing on the audiovisual content that you're putting up instead of hearing what you have to say. Visual aids should be large enough for everyone to see clearly. If you have a very beautiful and impressive presentation set up, but it isn't clear enough for everyone to see, then what's the point of displaying it anyway? Keep in mind that there might be people who could be seated far away from the screen where your visual content is being displayed. So, make sure that whatever you display is large and clear enough for everyone to see with ease. Audio aids should be loud and distinct enough for everyone to hear. The same goes for audio aids. If you have a very touching and moving speech, or some funny content to share with the audience, but people are not able to hear it, then your speech probably won't have the effect on people that you hoped it would. Keep charts, maps, and graphs very simple and uncluttered. Don't try to show too many details in one visual aid. Too much information might confuse the people who are looking forward to hearing your speech. So, make sure that whatever information you're displaying is easily seen easily understood, and easily remembered. A complicated speech doesn't really leave a memorable impression with the people. Be sure to look at your audience, not at your aids. Keep your contact with your audience while presenting your visuals. 
If you keep looking at your aids, you might come off as too distracted or unfocused to the audience. Make sure you keep looking at them to give them an assurance that you're with them and to track them to see if they understood your content. Reading their expressions will give you a feedback if you need to slow down at any point and if things get too confusing for them. Practice your presentation with all the aids before you deliver your speech. Practice when, where, and how you will use them. If you go without prior practice, you might end up getting too confused or unorganized while you're delivering your speech. It might also give off a very unprofessional impression. So, make sure you practice with all the equipments and aids beforehand. Have an assistant to handle the presentation aids so that you can concentrate on your audience. If you're going to take care of the aids and deliver your speech, chances are your mind might lose track of what you want to say next. Don't give yourself this opportunity. Instead, ask for a friend or an assistant to lend you a helping hand so that you can shift your entire focus on the speech completely and not on the audiovisual aids. Now let's look at all the different types of presentation aids, shall we? Let's start with the no-tech aids. No-tech presentation aids do not depend on computer-based technology or machines. Some examples of no-tech aids would be posters, flip charts, black or white boards, and physical objects. Flip charts, posters, black or white boards could be used to display a variety of images, including diagrams, graphs, charts, maps, and photographs. Let's take a look at all the different kinds of content that could be displayed using no-tech aids. Diagrams are simple illustrations that make concepts clearer and more vivid. Let's take a look at the different kinds of graphs that could be used and the roles they play, shall we? Bar graphs are used to compare rankings. Pie graphs are used to compare percentages. And line graphs show how a trend changes over time. Let's now look at the different types of charts. A flow chart explains the sequence of steps in a process. And a bullet chart lists key points. Maps and photographs can also be considered a part of no-tech aids. Maps show the location or the physical arrangement of a place. And photographs shows the authentic details of your object or topic. Some presenters choose to use physical objects during their speech presentation. Now, why do you think they choose to do that? Well, physical objects can be used to clarify explanations and it helps to maintain the listener's interest. Real-time objects can be shown to the audience for ease of clarity. Use a model if an object is too large to display like an airplane, impossible to display, like the human brain, or too small to display, like a molecule. Now, let's look at a few low-tech presentation aids. Aids without a computer. One such low-tech presentation aid would be the overhead transparency. These are clear plastic sheets with text or images imprinted on them. The transparencies are projected onto a white screen using an overhead projector that enlarges the content. You can write, print, or photocopy content from books directly onto a transparency. Films can be displayed by using DVDs from the library to support your speech if you have a TV. 
Audio content can also be played using an audio cassette or CD to play any recorded audio segments. Now let's look at some high tech presentation aids. High tech presentation aids are aids which use the computer, projector, and the internet to display images, audio clips, and video clips. You could display still images. You can find thousands of photos, pictures, and illustrations on the internet for your specific need. Search for the specific audio files, sound, and music for your presentation to play some audio clips. You can find plenty of news, reports, comedy, and video clips to enhance your speeches by playing some video clips. Presentation software. Knowing which presentation software to use and how to use them plays a big role while you're delivering your speech. Most speakers use presentation softwares like PowerPoint and Keynote to create dynamic presentations. There are three major aspects to creating effective presentation slides. The content. Text and art are the most common elements of presentation slides. Don't fill up a slide with too much text. Use a maximum of 20 words on a slide. Simply text by having keywords and easy phrases instead of long sentences. You could also add some clip art, pictures, and photos to greatly enhance your message. The next major aspect to consider would be the color. Be consistent in choosing one color for the background of your slide, one color for the titles, and one color for the text. Select a dark color for the background. A dark background tones down the brightness of the projector light and focuses your audience's attention on the content of the slide. Select lighter colors for the title and the text that contrast well against a dark background. Shades of yellow or white show up the best. And finally, the font type and size should also be considered as they play a major role in the presentation. Fancy, decorative, and cursive writing fonts are hard to read and can be very distracting. Use font types and sizes that are easy to see and read. Use font types like Times New Roman, Bookman Old Style, or MS Reference Serif. You could also use font types like Arial, Verdana, or MS Reference Sans Serif. Now, make sure you use 36 points for the main slide headings and the text should be a minimum of 24 points. Now let's take a look at all the different kinds of softwares you could use for your presentation. There are many interesting softwares of your choice. Some of them are paid, and some of them are completely free, so they won't exactly be burning a hole in your pocket. Let's look at the first, most obvious choice for everyone when they deliver their speech, it's Microsoft Office PowerPoint. Apple Keynote is also another software that people could consider while delivering their speech. Open Office Impress is a completely free software, which also helps you deliver your presentation effectively. Google Slides is a very convenient option for you since it's very free and inbuilt in your Google Drive also convenient and cost-effective. The next option is Adobe Presenter. You could also consider Coral Presentations. Adobe Persuasion is another option for those who want to do something fancy with their slides. Prezi is a fun way to display your content. And the last one is Evernote. It's a note-taking software that converts your notes into a presentation, so that should be pretty easy. 
All right. Let's now move to the guidelines for organizing your speech. Are you ready? It starts with the introduction. Number one, make sure that you greet the audience and get their attention. Number two, preview your main reasons. Then move on to the body of your speech. Number one, explain the first, second, third subtopics by using presentation aids and by giving examples. Make sure that you involve the audience. Number two, explain how the concepts relate to real life. And finally, comes the conclusion of your speech. Number one, summarize your main points. And number two, make final remarks and thank the audience for listening and invite any questions from them. Even though you are well prepared with your speech, you have all of your materials and audiovisual aids ready, and you're all geared up to get out there and do your thing, there might be something that could go wrong. Now, I really hope it doesn't, but sometimes we've got to take some measures to prevent any sort of accidents that might happen. It's always good to be prepared with certain backup options and plans, don't you think so? There are many ways that technology can help us make our presentations amazing. But, unfortunately, there are many ways that technology can also disappoint us. So, number one, keep some index cards ready. If you require your slides to help you remember your content, but for some god-awful reason your computer fails or the projector is broken, you can always take a look at your index cards and continue on with the show. Make sure not to crowd your index cards with too many words and mention only some keywords that you need to remember and say out. And number two, print out your presentation. Make a hard copy of your slide presentation and hand it out to the audience. So, in case technology ever fails you, you can still deliver your speech and the audience will still be able to look at everything that you've presented through their printed copies of your slides. Alright everyone, I hope you enjoyed learning the art of public speaking skills for you, more particularly powerful presentation aids for public speaking. Now, let me check how well you've learned this lesson by asking a few questions. Let's see who answers the best. Put your answers in the comment section below. Number one, mention any two types of no tech aids. Number two, why do you think some presenters use physical objects during their presentation? Number three, mention any two presentation softwares that you've seen. Have you answered all the questions in the comment section below? Well, I hope you had an enjoyable session of public speaking skills. Stay tuned to ITV Life Skills for you for the next video on life skills.